everyone please take their seats? And will a clerk please call the roll? John Donovan? Michael Hurley? Jay Lip? Gaylord Meyer? Eric Sunman? Pete Ambrose? Catherine Burstein? John Jones? Jeff Steele? Keith Varian? Ed Bateson? Sam Cargill? Hank Ferentz? David McKenzie? Mary McCullough? Heather Dean? Joe DiMartino? Bill Gerber? Joe Palmer? Cindy Waldron? Josh Garskoff? Lauren O'Brien? Andrew Semmel? Ruth Smay? Carol Way? Julie Gottlieb? She's here. Alan Marks? Joe Siebert? Jay Wolk? Liz Esma, Here. Jen Hochberg, Here. Kevin Hopkins, Here. Eric Newman, Here. Phil Pierce, Here. Hal Schwartz, Here. Kathy Braun, Here. Alex Durrell, Here. Jason Lee, Here. Tom McCarthy, Here. Jeff Malarano, Pamela Iacono, Here. Ellen Jacob, Here. Lori McCardle, Here. Carol Pontrelli, Here. Chris Timniak, Here. Brian Caffarelli, Here. Brian Farnan. He's on his way. Thank you. <laughs> Ray Newberger, Here. Bill Perugini, Here. Bruce Ryan. Here. Anyone I missed? A okay. um, couple things before we get started with the pledge. Um, I'm going to ask you all to remain standing for a moment of silence. As many of you know, Mary McCullough, um, representative from District 3, lost her husband this month. Uh, Jay Walk, uh, representative from District 5. Four, six, sorry, sorry. Um, his mother passed away, and sadly, his brother passed away this afternoon or this morning. So if you could keep them in your thoughts. Also, Coralie Rice, who was a very active in the community, especially with education and with the DTC, passed away. And I just found out that Isabel Broadhurst, who was the founder of A Day in the Sun, passed away as well. Um, so if we can all remain standing for a moment of silence after we do the pledge. And to lead us in the pledge this evening, in honor of Senior Center Month, we have Terry Giegengack and Julie DeMarco, if you guys want to come forward and lead us in the pledge. Um, and then after the moment of silence, they're going to just give us a brief update on the Senior Center because it is Senior Center Month. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you for welcoming us to the RTM meeting. Uh, Julie DeMarco and I are delighted to be here. And we wanted to let you know that, yes, September is Senior Center Month. Um, and uh, to celebrate Senior Center Month in Fairfield, we are very pleased to announce that we are going to be applying for national accreditation for our Bigelow Center for Senior Activities. So we hope it's a 12-month process, and it will be a lot of community processing and evaluation and input. So tonight we have Palma Senatore, who is with us here as part of the uh, uh, 501c3, our, our Fairfield Senior Citizens Associates, our fundraising body, and we also have the support of the Commission for Human Services. So. We are giving you a notice that we would like to give you a call to participate in our committee meetings in the next couple of months and hope that you will join us. And Julie? Thank you for indulging us tonight and allowing us to be here. This is very exciting to have National Senior Center Month. You'll find at each of your places there's information, our, uh, one of our newsletters from last month, our exercise schedule, and a call for volunteers. Um, seniors are 50 and older, so some of you can join us. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Pam.
Next item is to consider and act upon the minutes of the regular monthly meeting held on July 27, 2015. Moved by Representative Gottlieb, seconded by Representative Caffarelli. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Item passes unanimously. Next item on the agenda is to hear a report from the Joint Retirement Investment Board. This item was heard in committee. I understand there is follow-up for Chairman Vahey. Representative Dean, do you have questions for Mr. Vahey? Okay. Does anybody else have any follow-up? Mr. Vahey, I'm sorry we dragged you all the way down here. Um, all right, next item. To hear an update from the Fairfield Ludlow High School Building Committee Chairman or his designee regarding the status of the Fairfield Ludlow High School Building Project. This was also heard in committee. There was no follow-up and the uh, meeting chairman was notified that he did not need to be here. Item number six. To hear, consider, and act upon the following appointment to the Fairfield Ludlow High School Bi Building Committee as recommended by the Board of Selectmen. Gregory H. Paluski, unaffiliated, 51 Lounsbird Road, to fill a vacancy created by the resignation of Terry Leopold. Moved by. Don't all jump at once. Representative Ference, seconded by Representative Meyer. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, is there any comment from the public? Seeing none, back to the body. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. Item passes unanimously. Congratulations and thank you for your service. <laughs> Item number seven. To hear and consider and act upon the following resolution as recommended by the Board of Selectmen. Resolved that a system site lease agreement between the Town of Fairfield and CEFIA Holdings LLC for the purpose of erecting a photovoltaic electric generation system on the ground behind the Recreation Tennis Center at 15 Old Dam Road for the sole benefit of the Recreation Tennis Center, the term agreement being 20 years B and hereby is approved. Moved by Representative Garskoff, seconded by Representative um, Hochberg, sorry. <laughs> I just got off a plane from Chicago. Um, is there any discussion on this item? Uh, Representative Mel Ragno. Uh, Jeff Mel Ragno, District 8. Um, I agree with the, the idea of, of photocell and it being sort of free for the, the town to get it. Um, my only concern is the length of the contract being 20 years, especially with solar just starting to sort of come into its own. Um, there's been a lot of um, improvements in the past handful of years, and being locked into having this rate for 20 years, it seems like in that time frame, there's going to be much better systems that are going to be available. Um, and possibly a, a much better deal that could have been had later on in the future. So I'm not sure exactly what the right length of contract is, but I just think that 20 years just seems a little long um, to lock into something right now, um, since in that 20 years, I'm sure that the technology is going to be much better than it is today. Thanks. Is there anyone else who'd wish to speak to this item? Any members of the public? Seeing none, all those in favor of this item, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Abstentions? One abstention, Representative Farnan. Item passes. Item number eight. To hear and consider upon the fact, to hear, consider and act upon the following resolution as recommended by the Board of Selectmen. Resolved that a system site lease agreement between the Town of Fairfield and CEFIA Holdings LLC for the purpose of erecting a photovoltaic electric generation system on the roof of Tim Timothy Dwight Elementary School at 1600 Reading Road for the sole benefit of T Timothy Dwight Elementary School, the term of the agreement being 20 years, be and hereby is approved. Moved by Representative Dean, seconded by 
Representative Gerber, is there any discussion on this item? Representative Bateson. Thank you, Madam Moderator, Madam Moderator Ed Bates in District 3. Um, follow up to a concern I had at subcommittee. I don't see Mr. Bowman here, but I think he was supposed to resolve this. M maybe Mike can help first selectman. Uh, the only thing I saw on this was on the call, it's an agreement between the town of Fairfield, but in the lease agreement, it's between the town of Fairfield Board of Education. I just want to make sure that I know you guys approved it, but I I'm kind of tenuous on how I can approve a lease on behalf of the Board of Education. I, I, I think that the authority stops with them, but I, I thought Mr. Bowman was going to follow up with Stanton Lesser on this. I, so if he's not here, I don't know what to do. But that, that's my concern, is that I, I, the agreements between the Board of Ed and CIFA. On the call, it's the town of Fairfield and CIFA. I assume, I think Mr. Bowman, correct me if I'm wrong, everyone was at the committee, but I'm pretty sure that Mr. Bowman said that the Board of Education approved this. I believe, I, I believe that was his response. Okay. So and my concern is, is if okay. this, I don't want to get in the habit, uh, Madam Moderator, of approving lease agreements on school facilities if it's not under our purview. Mr. Tetro, do you have any insight on that? Uh, I don't have an answer. I didn't talk with Mr. Bowman. Didn't realize that was one of the questions. Uh, and I talked to Attorney Lesser earlier today, and he didn't bring it up. So I'm not sure if Mr. Bowman got to Mr. Lesser on that. Um, so I think that if that's, um, I think you raise a good point, and I think that might be a reason to uh, consider this just to make sure the agreement matches the resolution, and we're doing the right thing on that. I could I could suggest a modification which says both, but I don't know if that solves it either. So I think the simplest thing to do is get the correct answer from the town attorney. Are you recommending we, based upon what you just said, do you want to uh, put this off for a month? Uh, Joe, I don't believe we lose anything by putting this off for a month. I don't think it impacts. This is not one of these pass it by midnight tonight kind of issues. Oh, Mr. Farnan, all right. I'm sorry. No, no, that's okay. Yeah, no, I read, uh, yes. Uh, Brian Farn in District 10. Um, for those there at the subcommittee meeting, I am the uh, general counsel of the Connecticut Green Bank, uh, formerly referred to as Cephia. This deal is actually between Cephia Holdings and the town of Fairfield. Um, you could say the town of Fairfield, I'm abstaining, and there's no bonus. As I said in the subcommittee, there's no, it's a quasi public. There's no bonus coming my way through this deal or anything like that. There's no, um, but it really should be the town of Fearfield. It could say acting through the Board of Education. Uh, I mean, it should be, but it's the town of Fearfield that the agreement should be. So if you guys, if we want to correct it, I would say the town of Fearfield because it would not be the BOE who would be entering to the agreement. Uh, my yes, please. What I was looking for is an analogous situation. And since this is an improvement to the building, in one sense, an improvement to the end, as much we've done with other school buildings where we've expanded, modified the core, added in central air or compressors or uh, other systems, uh, if we were bonding those, sometimes that is through the uh, town, uh, and we're basically providing the structure and facility to the Board of Ed. So to the extent this is an improved part of the infrastructure, uh, it might be analogous to uh, the school improvement projects we've done. Yeah, no, I think that makes that complete sound sense. Reasonable? That makes very much sense. So I would recommend moving forward. I think there is a issue with if you. These are the types of deals you don't want to hold off on for too long because a you have the winter coming. B there's an investment tax credit that is going to be expiring at some point soon. So I would recommend there's some benefits of moving on this now as opposed to waiting where there could be a potential impact economically for the town. Thank you, Representative Farnan. Uh, I will, since Representative Farnan is a, an attorney for Sisyphia, I will uh, defer to his, um, the, if he has no problem with that and the first selectman is comparing this to a building improvement, which I see that, I, I see that logic. I have no pr problems proceeding this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Uh, Representative Farnan. Always the quiet one. I 
Better? All right. Um, do we want to amend the language then? I guess I would just propose recommending. Okay. Oh, I missed it. I apologize. All right, going back now. I'm sorry, I stepped off the dais, I didn't hear, sure. Yeah, thank you, uh, Ed Bates in District 3. I, I just, um, in, in, in just thinking about this, it, based upon what, what I've just heard, the only, the only issue I'm seeing is in system site lease agreement, it's referring to the Town of Fairfield Board of Education. I, 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 get, I would like to see that change to the Town of Fairfield according to what the uh, Council for CFIA said. So I, I would, I don't know how I'm going to say this, but I will support this as long as the underlying agreement is changed to reflect that it is between the Town of Fairfield and CFIA and not the Board of Education. Mr. Tetro, is that acceptable? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right, and then Representative Smith may hold on one second. And I would guess that, that if there's any problem for doing that, I think it would be easy to commit to bringing back to this body to have it finalized and appropriate. So Thank you. It seems like everyone understands the issue. Yep, I think so. Okay. The I, I propose move. I, I have no problem with this moving forward as long as it, I think it, it's noted for record here that we, I don't think we have the authority to change the underlying agreement. All, all we can do is address what's on the call. And what's on the call is, is approving the agreement. I say we approve the agreement as long as it reflects that it's between CFIA and the town of Fairfield. Got it. So, so I don't, I don't, okay, I'll make that motion. We'll call it a motion. I make a motion that uh, this body approve item number eight. Item number eight, pending that the underlying agreement is changed to reflect that the two parties are CFIA and the town of Fairfield. Is there a second, the Representative Garskoff? Is there any discussion on that? Seeing none. Anybody from the public wish to comment on that? I just went to the public. Technically, I can't go back to the body. Sorry. Um, all right, all in favor of the amendment signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Abstentions? Uh, Representative Farnan. Is there any further comment on the resolution as amended? Seeing none, any comments from the public? All those in favor of the new resolution, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Representative Farnan, Representative Caffarelli. The item is approved. Oh, goodness. Here we go. Item number nine. To hear, consider, and act upon the following resolution as recommended by the Board of Finance. Whereas it is in the best interest of the Town of Fairfield to complete a wastewater facilities planning study, including an overall comprehensive evaluation of the water pollution control facilities, collection system, and pump stations, and Whereas the cost of preparing such a study is $748,205, where $740,944 is eligible for 55% reimbursement, 407, four, oh God, I can't talk tonight, 407519 through a federal EPA clean water fund planning grant and the remaining balance 340686 is to be split equally $170,343 between the Water Pollution Control Authority and the Town of Fairfield. Now, therefore, it be resolved that Michael C. Tetro, first selectman of the Town of Fairfield, is duly authorized to enter into and sign contracts on behalf of the Town of Fairfield with the State of Connecticut's Department of Energy and Environmental Protection for the purpose of obtaining a federal EPA Clean Water Fund planning grant and further resolve that the first selectman is authorized to provide such additional information and execute such other documents as may be required by the state or federal government in connection with said contracts and to execute any amendments, rescissions, and revisions thereto secure said grant and further resolved that a bond resolution entitled a resolution appropriating $748,205 for costs associated with a wastewater facilities 
planning study, including a comprehensive evaluation of the town's water pollution control facility, collection system, and pumping station, and authorizing the issuance of bonds to finance such appropriation be and hereby is approved. And further resolved the agreement between the town of Fairfield and the Wright Pierce for a comprehensive evaluation of water pollution control fa facility and collection system infrastructure be and hereby is approved. Moved by. Representative Zizma. Seconded by <laughs> Representative Durrell. Is there any discussion on this item? Representative Ambrose. Peter Ambrose, District 2. District Two, Peter Ambrose. Uh, with respect to this matter, uh, the Finance Committee of the RTM um, had several questions after uh, after our general meeting on Monday night, and the uh, the, the questions uh, stemmed around the rationale as to uh, why all of this funding uh, paid by the town of Fairfield is not bonded. Uh, of course, 55 percent of the cost of the study will be reimbursed to the town by federal funds. The other 45%, the town's going to pick up. And of that amount, the WPCA fund will fund approximately half of that cost. Uh, my understanding is that there is approximately $5 million reserve in the WPCA fund. And the issue is, at least in my mind, why isn't the WPCA funding the entire amount of our sh share of the study? And so I'd like to pose that question to uh, either Joe uh, or the first selectman. Either one of you wish to answer that? Since uh, Mr. Michelangelo sat in on the meeting where this was discussed at the WPCA, let me give him the first shot at that. Uh, uh, historically, the uh, uh, the town side has picked up the bulk of the capital for the WPCA items and the WPCA has picked up the operating expenses. Uh, some of our larger projects that occurred recently, we did some denitrification work at the wastewater treatment plant to reduce the amount of nitrogen we discharge, uh, probably in the mid-2000s. And in that case, there was a split and it was less than 50-50, the town side absorbed more of the fees than the, uh, than the uh, WPCA side. So uh, all uh, the previous boards, the Board of Finance, the Board of Selectmen, and even the WPCA themselves uh, wrestled with that decision going forward. On uh, the 50-50 split was an effort to uh, get these and the other project we approved a month or two ago to proceed. And one of the things that I said last month, and I think all the other boards, or last week, and all the other boards agree, as a matter of policy, we need to come to consensus on what the split will be for future projects. So this is one to go forward, and I think the long-term policy issues will have to be settled between all the boards on who pays for what. Just to add on that, and that's been a uh, topic of discussion between the WPCA board themselves as well as several of us with members of the WPCA. And philosophically, uh, the question at some point becomes, should the WPCA be self-funding? If it's supposed to be self-sustaining, then you make the argument that whether it's operating or capital improvements, they should be covered in the fees. Uh, even though if they bond some, they're allowed to bond something, it's most likely they would need the town to guarantee the bond, if you will so that the, they'd still have the rates and the bonding process that we would have, a bond would still come before this board, but it would be spread out over 20 years so it wouldn't drive their costs up immensely as we get into this. Historically, we've done some different things, but they were so far in our history that I don't think anybody was on this board, any of the current members were on this board when we had those discussions. There are some significant discussions. We've looked at state statute, we've looked at the town charter, and as you might guess, they're appropriately gray. So there's not a definitive answer from that. You can look at 
any of the improvements we're making and saying, hey, they're expanding the system. That is good for the whole town because that lets us build more. That grows the grand list so everybody benefits from that. So the whole town should help pay for that. And those, it, it, if I tried to summarize, those are the two arguments. Either it should be self-sustaining because we treat it that way in our budget book. It doesn't impact the tax rate on an annual basis. Or because their capital improvements are big and are helping the whole town grow our grand list and everybody benefits from that, everybody should pay for it. I think that's a discussion we should have. We shouldn't be doing this kind of one bill at a time. However, this pr planning project, Joe, this will cover us for several years in terms of completing this work? Uh, well, it's, uh, the whole process is probably about a, a 12 to 18 month process, but it looks at an entire 18 year, 18, uh, a 20 year window, so it's a comprehensive plan for the next generation. So as we get into some big improvements, and the system does need improvement. That's not the question. The question is, what do we do first? How do we do it? How do we manage that over time? That's why we need this plan. The system is at 90 percent of capacity? Uh, it's been over 90 percent for the last uh, at least five years. Okay. And 90 percent is when we should start considering doing this type of thing. So what, um, what I would propose going forward is that we have this discussion, but we do it as part of a charter revision, and I would think that should happen sooner rather than later. So we can decide whether we want the WPCA to be self-sustaining or not for the town of Fairfield, or if there are certain exceptions that, that we do want the whole town to buy, that we decide that once and for all, and then we know how to handle these things going forward. But thank, in terms thank of, you. Uh, Mr. If I could just uh, add one more thing, Representative Ambrose. Sure. So everybody's clear. Uh, we went to bond council, and bond council said that he would recommend that we get an opinion from the WPCA as to what portion they wanted to pay and how they wanted to do this, and he would be uncomfortable uh, not following their opinion in terms of how this should be funded in terms of the use of WPCA funds. As a follow-up to that, Mr. Michelangelo, might you um, um, indicate the approximate cost projected to um, to modify or update the existing WPCA system? Uh, uh, during the capital budget workshops, uh, which were held in mid-September, there was probably around a dozen projects identified in that 20-year uh, uh, window, and it was upwards, I don't know the exact number, but it was upwards in the $35, $40 million range, and those are non-engineered estimates, placeholders, so to speak, uh, just on basic size and scales of probably a dozen different facilities. So one of the purposes of this is to fine-tune those numbers, see exactly what needs to be done on a more precise engineering scale. So those numbers will be refined in the, in the subsequent waterfalls in the years as we go ahead. Thank you, Joe. Uh, my concern is that um, uh, there are many residents in town that feel that the cost of this project, both the study and, and any future major improvements to the system, should be borne by the end users. And there are a lot of people that live in the Southport section of Fairfield, the Greenfield Hill section of Fairfield, and other sections of town that don't have access to city sewers. Yet, they share in the cost of bonding them. And is that fair? I don't think it is. So I think going forward, I think this really is going to be an issue that, that we've got to look into and come up with a fair resolution of it. And I understand the concept that, uh, that what's good for the, for the system in general is probably good for the town of Fairfield, but at the same time, you know, perhaps the cost should be prorated in a way that the end users pay the majority of the costs. That's my concern. So, thank you very much. Sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, absolutely. Mr. Tetro. Just to emphasize Mr. Ambrose's point, there are certain users that if this is put into the tax bill, will not pay for any of the capital improvement. In fact, the two biggest users for this system are Fairfield U, and the state of Connecticut because of the I-95 rest areas or service stations. So if we put this in the tax bill, the two biggest users don't pay any portion of that because the only people that pay for a portion of this are the people, it's based on your water usage and your sewer use fee. 
So that's one argument for saying it should be in the sewer years fee. The other argument is that, yes, it helps the whole grand list and helps us grow the system, and that helps potentially all taxpayers out. So that's the core of the system. I wasn't trying to argue either side. I was trying to lay that out. But I think we do need to have that discussion. I think we, we don't want to deal with this one at a time. My question is to Mr. Michelangelo, if, you know, if we basically approve this the way it is, we get through this one, we need to deal with that discussion before the next one comes because we'll start getting into bigger dollars. And that's when we really want to make sure that we're doing what's uh, best. This was, I think, as I hear stories, because I was not here, back in the 60s, I think this was a pretty contentious discussion at that time in terms of how it went down. I don't remember all the arguments. I'm not trying to replay those. But I think we, get, we have to decide how we want to do this going forward. So I think that, and we want to take time to do that away from holding this body up over one issue that's about $170,000 each when you get down to it. Any other comments on this item? Uh, Representative, I'm sorry, Mr. Becker. Thank you, David Becker, Board of Finance. Actually, um, through you, Madam Moderator, probably to Mr. Michelangelo. So I don't remember the, the amount of money in the fund coming up at the Board of Finance. I mean, it may have slipped in there somewhere. But with $5 million, you're saying, is the figure? Why, could you just describe, because you mentioned operational expenses versus, versus capital. So how often is that fund used? Because usually they come in with a budget, they generally stick to the budget. And so that's a lot of money to sort of just be sitting there. I assume collecting some rate of interest, probably not a lot. Yeah. So we go out and we bond this. Obviously, we're paying interest. It, it does pique the question, what's it sitting there for? And maybe there's a great answer, but if you could at least okay. dive in on that. Okay. In a, in a sense, it's uh, similar to the town reserve, where there's a certain percentage of the operating budget that you keep in reserve. And the it's not a separate account. So the, the fund balances, in a sense, and I'm not the finance sector, uh, expert, but in a sense, it's un, it's ever changing. So this year we've spent about 25% of our money from our operating budget, but we haven't collected any money. So now it's probably a little low. Next month, the, all of your sewer user bills, if you're on sewers, at least ha uh, half of the bill is due uh, uh, due October 1st, late November 1st. So in a sense, that's when we get our big surge. So five number is just a five million is a round number, and that's probably on the high side. But once again, it'll fluctuate over the year, just like our checking accounts will. As you know, payday it goes up, and then when we spend money, it goes down. So if you so if you brought that down to zero, you'd have a problem basically existing for the entire year because you're, in a sense, that self-sustaining component. Correct. Cor correct. And the the operating budget of the WPCA is about five million. So you know we could argue whether that's too high of a fund balance, but that's the. Uh, that's the fine. WPCA it just it, it hadn't that component. The explanation I think hadn't come up before, and it's a big number, so you hear it. So thank you for explaining that. Is there anyone else who wishes to address this item? Seeing no one, is there anyone from the public? Um, please come forward and state your name and address for the record. Now, if there's a microphone right up here, you may come up. And you'll need to turn the microphone on. Uh, Doug Jones, I'm from uh, 1304 Fairfield Woods. Um, it seems to me that there's a precedent for um, town sharing the uh, expenditure because 12, 14 years ago we bonded, we're in this room as a matter of fact, um, 1.9 million to um, complete the uh, fire suppression line project, <coughs> excuse me, up through Greenfield Hill. Um, and in that sense, uh, or in that particular situation, uh, the cost was borne by the taxpayer and not simply by uh, the folks who were benefiting from the project itself. Anyone else from the public? Back to the body. Is there anyone else who wishes to address this further? Seeing no one, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. Uh, Representative Ambrose is abstaining. Item passes. Thank you.
Next item, to hear and consider for the first time amendments to Chapter 99 of the Town Code, Transient Merchants, sponsored by Michael Hurley, District 1, Joe Palmer, District 4, and Pamela Iacono, District 9. Representative Hurley, do you wish to address the body? Yes, please. I'm Michael Hurley, RTM District 1, and Josh Garskoff, District 5. <laughs> it's like a cartoon, right? <laughs> um, we will be uh, proposing an amendment uh, to the ordinance next week. There was some good discussion at the joint committee meetings earlier this week, and we're working to develop some language uh, that addresses some of the items in the second paragraph as to how best to cover nonprofits in this ordinance update. And we just want to make sure that the language is tight and appropriate and has the blessing of the town attorney and the police department before we introduce it. And once it's, it's banked, we'll you know, circulate it to the moderator and she can circulate it to the group. But outside of that, we could take any questions, I guess. No, I guess the ordinance altogether. Does anybody have any questions on the ordinance? Representative Jacob and then Representative Dean. Yes, please. I'm going to ask you. Uh, Ellen Jacob, District 9. Um, another concern besides the nonprofits that was raised in the committee hearing on this ordinance uh, was the division of powers over the, the actual plan um, on page 4 of the proposed changes to uh, where uh, several people, I think, pointed out that the powers, if you go to page 4, Assigned in here. <laughs> Sorry, it's messy, but okay. okay. It's it's what who presides over oh, this, the retirement savings plan? Uh, we're, we're we're addressing the transient merchant oh. ordinance, not the <laughs> ordinance that deals with the pensions. <laughs> oh, Sorry. you have a question on the pension ordinance? Yeah, that's okay. That's if you could save item. that for the next item, that would be great. Thank you. Is there anybody? <laughs> Representative Dean on the transient merchant, then Representative Ambrose. We're, we're on transient merchant right now. Oh, great, thanks. Representative Dean, District 4. I had a, a question regarding uh, the fees and um, credits, or I'm trying to just locate this. Uh, that there would be a discount. There would be a discount for uh, service. Veterans, am I correct? Um, and could we extend that to also include senior citizens as well? I believe we did talk about that in committee. I mean, you're welcome to make that amendment on the floor. We chose not to add it, but there's nothing to prevent you from making an amendment on the floor. And that would be for next month or this month? Next month. Okay, then I will do that. Thank you. Representative Ambrose. Mr. Hurley, thank you. Uh, Peter Ambrose, District 2. Are you at liberty to, to let us know what the uh, proposed amendment is to the, to, to the charge? Uh, Josh Groskoff, District 5 again. Um, we don't have the language, but the, the question I raised was, uh, I think as it's currently written, nonprofits are exempt from needing to get one of these licenses. And my proposal is to perhaps uh, require them to get the license but waive the fee. So we're checking to see whether that can, can hold up and how to make it work. Any other questions on transient merchant? Um, Representative Braun. Um, I'm very much in favor of this. I just had a point. This is sort of form over substance. Um, when you, um, if you could just make it very clear that this is not, I don't think, an exact redlined version of what's in the town code now. 
and I don't have any problem with the way it's worded. It's simply going to replace the wording that's in there now. Just as a lawyer who reads documents, I, if there's redlining, I assume what's not redlined is part of what's already approved in the code. So this, I don't think exactly matches what's in the code. It doesn't matter to me because I think it's worded just fine. But I'd just like to be very clear on what it is, the old, ver the old verbiage versus the new verbiage. Thank you. Yes, I did talk to Chief Liddy, and the document you have in front of you is the document that he will put online. I'm not exactly sure why there's two different versions out there, but and there's there's nothing of substantive change in the it's little wording things. I don't understand it myself, but he has assured me that what we adopt here will go on the website. Anything else, Representative O'Brien? <laughs> I know. I, I don't know. Lauren O'Brien, District 5. I would strongly recommend that with regards to nonprofits and this ordinance, that they are scrutinized as closely and carefully as anyone else. Um, it's a large sweeping category, and it encompasses businesses you wouldn't even think about. And uh, for instance, in town right now, we have any number of nonprofits that are operating in violation of our zoning codes. And that would be the large uh, clothing collection bins. If you go to the zoning department and you ask if they're allowed, they're not. Yet they're here and they're operating. And they're not all, um, they're not all reputable individuals and, and organizations and it's concerning. And so it, while, you're, while we would all like to think that not-for-profit is a wonderful thing and that there's a shining light over the organization, it's not always the case. So I would like us to very closely scrutinize not-for-profit transient merchants in town. Thank you. We, we are closely looking at it, and that's why we're taking the time to develop the most appropriate language with the town attorney and uh, the police department. Representative Garskoff, you wanted to comment on that. Thank you. Um, also, the purpose of my question and perhaps amendment is not only t because there may be some shady or nonprofits, or uh, but my point is, if nonprofits are exempt and somebody comes to my door and they say, "Oh, I'm a nonprofit," I have no way to prove whether they're a nonprofit or not. I want them to have to go through the process and prove who they are and get their ID. Regardless of whether they're a nonprofit, for profit, shady, not shady, they've got to go through the police, they've got to get an ID, they've got to prove who they are. That way, there's, no, there's nobody exempt at the door. They've all got to pass the same muster, but we're going to offer them a free, a free license. That was my point. Thank you. And I just want to be clear this does not affect children going door to door with school sales fundraising they do not need to go downtown and get fingerprinted girl scouts boy scouts they're exempt may i be seated madam moderator i believe you may does anybody else have any questions would you like to remain standing for the pension ordinance okay i can do you want me to stand for the yeah i can yeah, stand just stay up there Hold okay on. item number 11 this item uh, by the way transient merchant will be on for a vote in october um Item number 11, to hear and consider for the first time amendments to Chapter 37 of the Town Code Retirement System sponsored by Michael Hurley, District 1, Pamela Iacono, District 9, and Ray Newberger, District 10. Um, I know there was one question that came out of committee regarding the supervision um, for the um, pension plan that raised questions and Attorney Cohen addressed it. Um, and the chief financial officer said that he would have the language regarding the Board of Selectmen removed, and he did that today. He sent me an update um, so that the powers lie with the RTM and not with the Board of Selectmen. Um, so that is one amendment that will be coming forward next month. Does anybody else have any other questions? Seeing none, thank you, Representative. Thank you. Hurley, that item will be up for a vote in October as well. Item number 12, to consider and act upon any other matters presented to said meeting and which may be properly acted upon under the rules of the representative town meeting. Anybody have anything that they want to address at this time? I know we received an email today about the re voting and the register of voters. Um, Mr. Tetro, did you want to 
address what the registers are doing or, or not? <laughs> Can I sit down now since I've told you everything I know about what they're doing? Um, to be fair, voting is very important. Uh, what we've been trying to do is get a plan from the, the registrar's uh, office, something that both registrars have agreed on. Uh, that has proved uh, a little more complicated than it might otherwise be. Uh, there's an issue of where we get the money for it. since. They did not put any money in the budget for it, as best I can tell at this point. Uh, we will fund it. It's not a huge amount. I believe it's in the five to ten grand range based on what they do. It's my understanding at the moment, and um, I'm going to say this a little, a little qualified because the emails have been frequent and less than clear, and I believe the moderator has been copied on a number. We've uh, also copied uh, both party chairs on a number of these emails just to make sure it's the communication is nonpartisan and is open to everybody. However, I uh, believe the registrars are going to send out one postcard mailing. Uh, they're discussing now whether that goes to a household or to a person in terms of identifying where their new um, polling location is. I met today with the League of Women Voters. They are looking at what they can do on their website and in some of uh, their ads in the paper, that type of thing. Both the registrars and the League, and Vote, League of Women Voters have been invited to a Board of Selectmen meeting, so they each have their piece of time to describe what their organization is doing to help people find where they vote. The RTC has a link on their website, and I believe they're promoting that. And forgive me for mentioning the party and town committees, but this is bipartisan. This is not, there's no political part of this. We're just trying to get people to the right place to vote. Uh, the Democratic side, I believe, is doing something comparable. The town website, the first page, has a where do you vote. And we have two links. One goes to the Secretary of State's. You type in your name and your birthday, and that gets you one place. There's a second link where you just type in your street address. It's simpler. I've done them both. And it tells you where to go nicely, but it tells you where to go. Um, we are looking at uh, what else we can do. We're actually counting on the candidates to make sure as they knock on doors, specifically RTM candidates, to help us inform people where they vote. We are looking at the possibility of potentially doing a code red message. There are some complications in that. Um, and just for the record, no elected official will be involved in actually saying the message. But the, uh, we would do a potential look at a code red message to do that to make sure we get out there. We've got to be able to do it very clean and precise so that we don't, you know, identify to Mr. Ambrose that he's going to one place and Mr. Palmer that he's going to one place and Mr. Palmer finds out his place is wrong. We don't want to put the town in a situation of doing that. So we are looking at that. The, the goal is to make sure we get the word out. Um, the League of Women Voters is also doing, I believe, um, either an op-ed or letters to the editor to identify where that is. But simply put, if we can give people a phone number for the registrars and the Town of Connecticut website or the RTC website if you choose, however, but get back to a link to say, put your address in here, this will tell you where to vote, we need everybody to have that and have that very simply. So whatever members of this body can do or encourage, encourage your respective candidates for uh, the fall or next month, I guess, wow, um, to do, that would be very helpful. Thank you. Representative Bateson. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Ed Bateson, District 3. I'll just take the opportunity. We have Fair TV here just to address the public and say there's a chance your voting district where you usually vote has changed. So please, if you're watching, go on the town website and check and see if it has changed. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else have any other items? Seeing none, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Representative Ambrose, second by Representative O'Brien.